subject today is obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. Amen. The scripture text come from 1 Samuel chapter 15. A little lengthy reading, but amen. It sets the foundation for this message. 1 Samuel chapter 15, begin with verse number 1 through verse 31. And Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken unto thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus said the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant, sucklings, ox, sheep, and camel, and ass. And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in Tilium, 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to a city of, the, of Amalek and lay wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Kenites, Go, depart, get thou down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For you show kindness in all the, to, the, to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites <coughs> departed from among <coughs> the Amalekites. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah until thou comest to Shur, that is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive, and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatlings and of the lambs and all that was good, <coughs> that they not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vowed and refused, that they destroyed utterly. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repent me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he has turned back from following me, and have not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, he was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place, and is going about, and passed on, and going down to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, What meaneth then this bleeding of the sheep in mine ears, and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, they have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. And Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord hath said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? And the Lord sent thee on a journey, and said, Go and utterly destroy the, the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the thing which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Had the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is at the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is at iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Amen. Amen. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned. 
for I have transgressed and committed, uh, uh, transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now, therefore, I pray thee, pardon my sin and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said unto him, Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. Samuel turned, about to go away, and he laid hands upon the skirt of his mantle, and it rent. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and given it to a neighbor thine that is better than thou. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. Then he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now, I pray thee, before the elders of the, my people and before Israel, and turn again with me that I may worship the Lord thy God. So Samuel turned again at the soul, and Saul worshiped the Lord. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. In simple terminology, to obey simply means to do as one has been asked or told to do. Amen. Amen. And to not obey means to not to do as one has been told or asked to do. Amen. How many times uh, during the day do we disobey? Amen. There are warnings, there's caution signs, instructional signs everywhere. Amen. But how many of us obey those things? Amen. Or do we do what we want to do as we want to do? Society and life is much better and things go well and better, amen, when men, women, young and old, obey the instructions, the advice, the direction that's given, amen. When those things are disobeyed, there are always consequences that one will pay. Now, there are various reasons that people give for uh, not obeying. They have various objections that they use to justify not obeying. I don't see where that's necessary. I don't agree with that. No one else is obeying. And the list go on and on and on. Of the excuses men and women, young and old, use for not obeying. Let me repeat those again. They might be familiar with some of us. I don't see where that's necessary. I don't agree with that. No one else is obeying. Why should I? Amen. And we see the consequences every day. It may have happened to some of us. Some don't see it necessary when they see the sign says, bridge is out. <laughs> amen. And they wonder why they find themselves, amen, six feet down, amen, uh, in the ditch because they didn't see it was necessary to obey that sign. And some because I don't believe. Amen. Praise the Lord. Rebellion is the catch word for disobedience. Amen. Amen. Why is obedience so important? And why is rebellion such an awful word to rebel? Most of us don't like to think of ourselves and be honest with ourselves. Amen. Some words define us just as we are. And yet sometimes we'll say, no, that's not me. It's always somebody else. Amen. Amen. To rebel means to refuse. It means to resist, 
to rise up against, amen, to resist any authority or control over our lives. Amen. amen. We want to live in a free society where everyone do as they please, do as they want to do. And no one, amen, is held accountable. Can you imagine what this world would be like today or what city of Charlotte would be like today? It's bad enough as it is. Amen. amen. But can you imagine what it would be like? Amen. If everybody did what they want to do, when they want to, and how they want to, even the civil laws. Amen. amen. Even the laws that's posted there for our good, some just will not obey. Amen. But we'll learn today that with rebellion and refusal to obey has consequences. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mankind begins a lifelong uh, life of rebelling from the day we're born. Amen. Praise the Lord. Children at an early age, even before they talk or walk, Amen. Has a spirit of rebellion in them. Amen. Amen. I know I'm right about it. Amen. Amen. I raised six. Amen. And not a one did not want to rebel. Amen. A child sometimes when he don't want something and you know they need it, it's time for them to have it. And sometimes they will resist. Can't even talk, but they'll, they'll push your hand away, they'll turn Amen. The mouth or whatever it may be. That's a sign of rebellion. What they're saying is, I want to have my way. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me talk about the children a little bit, then I'll talk about us. Right. Amen. Let's talk about the children, then we talk about mom and dad. Amen. The child, even as an infant, the Bible says this, as soon as they're born, they're going astray. He said they will rebel even in the crib. Amen. So that spirit of rebellion is born in them. They're born sinners. They're born rebelling. Not wanting to do. Not wanting to obey. Wanting to have their own way. Amen. Any of you ever had a child and raised a child that did not want to have their way? Amen. If so, I need a witness, amen, that I'm wrong. Amen. Every child, when they're born into this world, they're born with that spirit of rebellion, don't want to do. Amen. You want them to go this way, and they want to go the other way. Amen. Yep. That's a spirit of rebellion. Amen. And many times, there are consequences for not obeying. Amen. I was teaching a lesson uh, in uh, Tucker, Georgia, Amen. I was at our French speaking church, and I was talking about children and their disobedience and why it's so important for them to obey. And I use the example of that wall socket. Amen. Child has a hairpin, amen, and they want to go and stick it in there. Amen. And you're pulling them back, and they, they're going to resist. Amen. And you tell them, stop, and they don't. What's going to be the consequences? You're going to be having a funeral. Amen. Amen. What if that child doesn't obey? What if you not taught that child and expect that child and they learn to obey? When they learn, when you say stop, that means stop. It doesn't mean run five more feet. It means stop then because there's danger. Amen. Amen. There are consequences. Amen. Amen. In 19... Uh, 63, amen, in Würzburg, Germany. We was going down the street. We had just gotten there. A bunch of our GIs, we were going downtown to see the town for the first time. And just so happened, it, all of us were black. Uh, that wasn't by design. It just happened that way. We was going down the street, or the Strasse, as they call it. And there was a German couple walking up the street, and the little boy was, you know, skipping that little children like to do in front of them. And he happened to look up. 
He started screaming, Swasa man, Swasa man, which means black man, black man. And he started running into the street. Had there not been a police there to grab him and snatch him back, there was a truck that would have killed him. He did not learn what it means to stop. Consequences come with disobedience. Amen. Amen. Spiritually, there are even greater consequences for not obeying. In the lesson today, it's about obedience and rebellion. In the book of Genesis chapter 4, the first murder was committed because of rebellion. Amen. Amen. Eve and Adam had two sons. Amen. The older son name was Cain, and the youngest one, Abel. Amen. And they both had been taught by their father about the sacrifice that God required. Amen. amen. God required, amen, a living sacrifice that was brought, amen, from, amen, among the sheep or the goats or whatever. Amen. They both were taught this. But the Bible says there came a day when they brought their offerings to God. Abel, the youngest one, amen, who was amen, uh, a sheep herder, he bought what God required. He bought a sheep to offer to God a blood sacrifice. His brother Cain was a farmer. He brought vegetables, collard greens or whatever the case may have been, to offer to God as a sacrifice. And when God rejected his sacrifice, he became upset. Amen. He knew what sacrifice God required, but he wanted to do what he wanted to do. Right. Amen. Amen. And his countenance fell, and God said to him, why are you sad? Why are your countenance fallen? Amen. He said, had not you done what was right, would not I have also blessed you? Amen. Amen. If you will do what's right, I'll bless you also. Cain became upset. And the next day, the Bible says he was out in the field and he looked around and there was no one looking and he killed his brother. Amen. Brother had done nothing to him. Amen. His argument was with God because God refused his offering that he wanted to give and he was in the spirit of rebellion against God because he gave God what he wanted God to have, Amen. not what God required. Amen. There are consequences for disobedience. Amen. Praise the Lord. We can give God what we want, but God has told us in his word what he requires of us, and that is our obedience. Amen. Amen. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 15, where our message comes from on this morning, God chose Saul to be king over Israel. And God sent Samuel, the man of God, to tell Saul what God wanted. Amen. And from this lesson today, we're going to learn two things. One, that partial obedience is not obedience. And two, that there is nothing that can replace obedience. Amen. Two lessons. Amen. Partial obedience is not obedience. Amen. Amen. And that there's nothing that can replace obedience. In 1 Samuel 15, God sent Samuel to tell Saul to go and destroy all the Amalekites. And the reason being why God wanted to destroy them was when Israel was coming out of Egypt as God was taking them to the promised land. When they got to the land of the Amalekites, the Amalekites amen, hid and watched all of the Israelites go past them. Israel always went with the soldiers and musicians in front. So there because they saw any danger they could fight. And then, amen, the men next, and the women, and the children, and the older ones in the back. Amen. And they went through the land, the Amalekites, 
waited patiently in ambush. Let all the soldiers, all the strong men, all the young men go past. And then they came behind and killed the old people, the children, and the sick. And God told Amalekite, he said, I'm going to remember this. And God took Israel on to the promised land. Now being in the promised land, now he said to Saul, now listen, I remember what Amalek did to Israel when they passed through the lands. I want you to go down now and utterly destroy them. And he said, utterly. And he itemized things that they should kill. Men, women, children, the old, the young, kill all the animals, kill all the cows, the sheep, kill everything and burn it to the ground. Let nothing live. Kill and destroy everything that God has commanded you to do. Amen. Those are specific instructions. Kill, destroy everything. Leave nothing alive. Don't have mercy upon amen, the women. Don't have no mercy upon the babes. Amen. Take the small children amen, and cut them in half with a sword. Amen. Destroy everything. And the Bible says Saul left and he carried with him 210,000 soldiers to fulfill God's command. And he went down and he came through the land of the Canaanites. He said to the Canaanites, listen, we're going to destroy the Amalekites, so you among them, you better get out from among them because if not, we're going to kill you too. So he gave them all time to escape. Then the Bible says he goes in and they began, amen, to fight and to destroy the Amalekites. Amen. Destroying all of them. But here's where Saul went wrong. Saul spared the king he spared the best of the sheep and oxen, Amen. all those that were lame, blind, or crippled, or had damage, he killed all of them. But all the good ones, he kept them. Amen. Amen. He spared the king. But, brothers and sisters, that's not what God told him to do. Amen. Here we find a classic example of someone, am I, hearing God's command, knowing God's command and still decide to do it their own way. I'm going to do what I want to do. Amen. In so many words, he was saying, I don't see why we got to kill all these good sheep and oxen. We're going to keep them. Amen. But listen, partial obedience is still disobedience. Doing some of what God says and leaving some off it's still disobedience. Amen. 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 Obedience is sacrificing our will and doing God's will. Amen. Right. Saul went down to the Amalekites. He spared the king. All the good sheep and the oxen, they went through. Well, keep this one, kill that one, take this one, kill that one. Amen. And all the time, did he ever stop to remember and think? God said, utterly destroy everything. Amen. What about God's word to us? Amen. What part are we obeying? And other part we're not obeying because I don't see where it's necessary. I don't think I have to do it that way. Amen. So Saul spared all the good things. God said to Samuel the priest, he said, go down to Saul. He's not obeyed me. And Samuel went looking for Saul. And when he found Saul, amen, he began to question Saul. And the first thing Saul said when he saw the man of God coming, he's an old man of God. You know, I have done everything God had told me to do. I, kill, I did everything God told me to do. And the man of God said to him, well, if you killed everything God told you to do, what is this sheep that I hear? Amen. What I hear all this, bah, bah. dead sheep don't talk. 
So why do I hear that if you did what God told you to do? He said, oh, that? Oh, let me explain this. The people, someone has always somebody to disobey, to follow rather. Amen. You ever been driving down the highway and the speed limit is 65 and someone passed by you doing 70 and you jumped right behind them? And unfortunately, sometimes the police just stop you. And what do you tell him? Well, there's another car in front of me. He was going fast too. I'm not the only one. What about our God? When he gave Saul in his specific instructions, and yet Saul tried to make excuse why he did not kill them. You know what his excuse was? We saved the best sheep, the best oxen. We're going to offer them to your God. <laughs> Amen. And what was Samuel's response? Does God take more delight amen, in burnt offering sacrifice, no matter how good it is, than you're obeying him? Amen. amen. Does God want, amen, all your tithe, amen, and you won't stop your line? Does God want these things from you, your praise and your worship, and other parts of his word you won't obey? Amen. amen. That's what this message is about today. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. Partial obedience is disobedience. Amen. Amen. And let me say that again. Does God want your songs, your praise, your worship, your tithe, your offering, your service? Amen. And you're not obeying, amen, his laws, his standards of holiness? Hmm? Amen. What's better? Amen. Amen. Are we trying to bribe God? We're saying to God in so many words, oh, well, I'm going to give you what I want. You know, oh, I don't mind. Yeah, I'll come to choir rehearsal. I'll do this. I'll do that. I'll work on this board. I'll do that. Amen. I'll be faithful. I'll pay my tithes and offer. But Lord, I, you, know, you know, I can't give this up. <laughs> Amen. I don't see why this is necessary. I don't understand why I can't do this. Amen. Saul had the same attitude. He said to Samuel, when Samuel told him about what he had done, and let me read it to you. Amen. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, when Samuel went down to Saul, verse 17, he says, and Samuel said, when you was little in your own sight, when you was a nobody, and, was not, and you was not the head of the tribes of Israel. And the Lord anointed you king over Israel. And the Lord sent you on a journey. And the Lord said, go and utterly destroy the sins of the Amalekites. Fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore did thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but did fly upon the spoil and did evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said unto Samuel, Yes, I will obey the voice of the Lord. Beside disobeying God, then he lies. Amen. And I have gone the way which the Lord sent me, but I brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the spoil. Isn't it so convenient sometimes when we don't obey? We always want to point to somebody else who's not obeying. Amen. The people took of the spoil, sheep, and oxen, the chief of the thing which should have been able to destroy it. Amen. And brought them to sacrifice unto the Lord your God in Gilgal. Bribing God. Amen. Well, Lord, I'll, I'll give you this and I'll give you that, but, you know, these other things, I can't give you that. But I'm going to give you some of the things you asked me for. But there's something, I want to do it my way. I want to do it as I want to do it. And we expect God to accept that. Amen. But listen, as he goes on talking, amen, to Saul, 
Verse 22, and Samuel said, had the Lord more delight in burnt offerings than sacrifice? You think God would enjoy all that you're giving to him? You think it's what God wants? You want all these burnt offerings that you're going to give to him of all these fat rams and lambs and sheep? You think that's going to please God? He'd rather have that? Amen. Does he take that more than he wants you to obey him? Amen. Then he said, Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken or to listen better than the fat of rams. How many times any of us in our life growing up got into trouble, and some in trouble now because you would not obey? But I did it my way. Amen. Who sings that song? Oh, somebody didn't know who sang it. Frank Sinatra? Yeah. I did it my way. Saul did it his way. We are to obey God, not partially, but wholeheartedly. Listen, God has the attitude, if you can't give me all of what I ask, don't try to give me nothing. You can't bribe me. There's a consequence for not obeying God. And listen, what it cost Saul. The Bible says in verse number 23, rebellion is at the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is at iniquity and idolatry. Amen. Signs of one being his or her own way is stubbornness and rebellion. Rebelling against the word of God. Amen. Choosing my own way over God's way. Amen. But it says here, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you from being king. Amen. What a price to pay for disobedience, for having his own way. Here he is, king over all of Israel. And God made him so. Amen. Amen. But because of his rebellion and refusal to give God all that God asked for, it cost him his kingship. And as you go on and read in 1 Samuel, it cost him later on his life and his soul. Amen. Amen. But listen to what the word of God says. In verse 24, And Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Amen. Now, therefore, I pray you, I ask you, pardon my sin and turn again with me that I may worship God. And Samuel said, I will not worship God with you. Amen. God is expecting us as his people. If we're going to be saved and worship him, you want your worship to God to be accepted. You want your praises that sometimes are very well spoken to be accepted to God. Listen, when you know you're disobeying God in some area that God requires us, just because when you make your praise and everybody say amen and shout and dance, that doesn't mean that God is rejoicing. Amen. Hmm? Amen. God looks down and they see my partial obedience. Amen. Partial obedience is disobedience. Amen. We cannot obey God in part and expect God to accept it. Amen. Amen. For the Bible said to hearken is better than the fat of rams. But look what it caused him. He lost favor with God. And when he heard that God was rejecting him, Amen. When the man of God turned to go away, he ran and caught him, amen, by his garment and ripped his clothes. Said, please, no, you know, turn with me, pray for me, pray with me. Amen. I can pray to God again. And the man of God said to him, No, I won't. And started to turn again and keep begging and pleading with him. At least honor me before my people. At least give me some, amen, some, pres some prestige among them. 
And Samuel turned and prayed with him again, but he also reminded him, amen, what God has spoken, God will do. It's time to search our hearts, amen. Partial obedience is not obedience, amen. amen. We as parents deal with our children the same way, amen. You tell little Harriet, amen, to clean the room, vacuum the living room, and take the garbage out. She take the garbage out, but doesn't vacuum the living room. Has she done what you told her to do? No. Amen. God is saying to us today as believers, and all of us, obedience to God cannot be substituted for our own way. Amen. Amen. We have to obey God totally or none at all. Yeah. There is no credit given for partial obedience. Amen. And so lost the right to the kingdom. Amen. And Samuel said unto him, God is going to take the kingship from you and give it to someone else better than you. Amen. And that spirit of rebellion was in him so much. Amen. He knew who it was. <laughs> Amen. And Saul went on a vendetta to try to kill the next king. Amen. Even though God had taken the kingship from him because of his disobedience. Why reward someone for disobedience and a spirit of rebellion when there are others who are obeying God and doing his will? Will God be just? Will God be righteous enough that he will hold us accountable since God always keeps his word? Saul had it made. He would have been king of all of Israel. But look what disobedience and rebellion cost him. Amen. And brothers and sisters, we can put it in what order we want to put it in. But rebellion and stubbornness, the Bible says, is just like the sin of witchcraft. Amen. amen. That's how God views, amen, our stubbornness our refusal to obey. Sometimes we get in an attitude, that spirit of mind, and we become stubborn. I'm just not going to change. I'm going to do what I want to do like I want to do it. But the Bible said that a person like that, God puts you in the same category of a witch, of someone practicing witchcraft. What did God do with all the witches? He sent the men of God, he said, go through the land, and every witch, amen, uh, every wizard, those who practice necromancy, kill all of them. Don't let none of them live. Destroy them. Don't have no mercy upon them. Why would God have mercy upon Amen. A child of God who disobedience knowingly, willingly, and stubbornly, why should God allow them into the kingdom of God? Why should God allow them to be taken up in the rapture? When I refuse to do your word, I'm going to obey the part that I want to obey, and I'm going to obey it like I want to. You got to crucify yourself and live unto God. Amen. Amen. Obedience, he said, is better than the sacrifice you can give. Amen. 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 If you triple your tithing, that does not replace obedience. Amen. 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 If you step up your time in church service, you're on every board you can get on, you're doing this and you're doing that, and God is still saying, Amen, I'm looking for obedience. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, you got to sacrifice your own will and surrender your will 
to God's will. What a price to pay to lose the kingdom and in the end lose his soul. For what? He never explained why he kept the king. God told him, you find the king and you kill him. Amen. And yet they brought the king back. What for? He told why they kept the, the good sheep and the lamb and we want to offer it to your God as a sacrifice. But they never explained why he spared the king. And God had told him, kill every living creature. God will always accomplish his will with you or without you. God's will will be done. Amen. God will have someone who will worship and serve him out of sincerity and honesty and truthfulness. Amen. Praise the Lord. Then Samuel said to Saul, Where's the king? And there was a king over there trembling. And he was thinking because Saul didn't kill him, he had it made. He said, give me a sword and bring me the king. And the king came trembling. And the man of God took the sword. And the Bible says they cut him into pieces. God's will is going to be done whether we do it or not. God's going to get him a people whether it's you or not. The rapture will not be empty whether you're in it or not. Obedience is better than sacrifice. There's nothing we can give to God to replace our obedience. Amen. Time will not allow me to go in other areas of obedience but now we want to focus on obedience to God. Amen. Amen. And listen, disobedience has consequences. Yeah. Hear me well. There's nothing you can do to replace obedience. Amen. Hmm? Amen. Nothing. When I refuse to obey God, what can I give him to replace to make that up? Well, Lord, I'm not going to do that, but here's what I am going to do. I'll do this. God is not in the bargaining business. Amen. We choose the direction we want to go in over the direction God said we should go in. Obedience is better than sacrifice. But then it says, amen, to disobey God to rebel against God is like witchcraft and idolatry. <coughs> Amen. That's how God looks at our disobedience. Witchcraft and idolatry. What are you giving God today? In obedience to his word, his will. Amen. The principle that God gives us to live by what are you giving God in return? Y'all giving him your obedience? He who created you, who saved you, who died on the cross for your sins, who healed you when you were sick, supplied your need when you didn't have anything, opened doors for you that was closed against you, put you among, amen, the people of God, counted you among the sanctified ones, amen, getting you prepared for eternal life. What are you giving him back in return? God wants just one thing. He said, God said, listen, I don't need your money. All the gold is mine. <laughs> Everything in this world belongs to me. So no, I, you know, I don't need anything that you want to give me tangibly. I don't think I want is your obedience and your love. Amen. Coming to the close of this message, even in the world, you know, God is still calling men and women to obedience to the gospel. Amen. And some still refuse. Just ain't going to obey. Amen. Jesus commanded the apostles 
And this is God's word. So I want you to go in the world. I want you to preach repentance. Tell men and women they got to change. Amen. They got to go in a new direction. Preach repentance and water baptism in my name. And don't you know, out of all that the Bible says about repentance and baptism in the name of Jesus Christ throughout the Bible, there's still some who still refuse. Amen. They have their own opinions. I think it all means the same thing. I don't see it that way. Amen. You got your way and I got mine. We all get to heaven at the same time. Satan has blinded their minds to the reality of God. Amen. Amen. One thing is, ain't nobody going to heaven. If God don't take you, you won't get there. Right. Amen. And then had this old saying, amen, you know, about their faith, you know, I've been born this way, and I'm going to die this way. And when I'm gone, amen, I'll just be going that way. You know the little jingle that they say? Yet God is still saying, amen, you will not get into the kingdom of God without obedience. What excuses do we give God for not, amen, lighting up with his word, being obedient to the word of God? Amen. God is not hard up, as they say, amen, for praises from us, from worship from us, if it does not come from a sincere and a pure and obedient heart. Amen. God wanted it all. He would not share with the devil. He would not pardon with you or anyone else. God wanted it all or none. Total obedience. Amen. And listen, brothers and sisters and friends of mine, there is coming a reckoning day, as it was with Saul. Oh, yes, he went on for a while doing what he wanted to do. Well, there came a day and a time, amen, when God sent the man of God down to call him into question. And when that time came, it was too late to change. When a rapture comes or when death comes, no matter how old or how young you may be, how healthy you may be, death can come at a moment's notice. Amen. And if you don't have it like God says it should be, you'll be eternally lost. Amen. If you have not repented of your sins, been baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ, like the Bible said, been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, and walking in obedience when the Lord comes back, amen, in hell you lift up your eyes. Amen. There's no way to be saved outside of obedience to God's word. Total obedience. God is saying to the whole world today, amen, set your house in order. I'm coming soon. Amen. And God's not so unfair to catch you off guard. Oh, he won't do that. Amen. He tell us, you know, the sign to look for. He tell us when I'm going to come. I'm going to come in a twinkling of an eye. So you be ready. So I'm, telling, I'm telling you in advance now. Amen. When I come back, be ready. I'm not going to send no warnings to you. I'm not going to send no updated message that I'm coming next week. So you got seven days to get it right. So I'm going to come in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And when I come, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Those that are alive and remain. And that word remain means remains faithful to God, obedient to God. Walking in God's will, Amen. they all be caught up to meet Him in the air. Amen. And the Bible said, There we shall ever be with the Lord. Amen. But the fearful and the bondable and the liars and the disobedient should be left behind. And after the rapture, for those who live now, there is no way to be saved. You will not have an opportunity to stand before God and tell him why you did what you did and how sorry you are. No. The white throne judgment is not designed for that. Sometimes we read our Bible wrong. The Bible says we'd be judged. Amen. And judgment comes, amen, at the end of a trial. 
when the judge speaks and announces, amen, the penalty. Amen. All the pleading that should have been done should have been done while we had an opportunity. And tomorrow not promised to any of us. The Lord said today is the day of salvation. Brothers and sisters and friends of mine, today is the day to get right with God if you're not right with him. Today God is calling men and women, young and old. He said, come to me, all that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My yoke is easy, my burdens are light, and you'll find rest for your souls. But how many will take heed to the warning? Well, today can be your day of deliverance. Today can be your day of turning around. Today can be your day of turning back to God and giving your life to him. And you know what God promised? He said, I'll forgive. If your repentance is sincere and honest, I'll forgive and I'll receive you as a son and a daughter. And you can have eternal life. For those who have not been saved like the Bible says, who have not been baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ and received the gift of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues that the Spirit of God gives utterance. The Bible says in Acts 2.38 to repent. Have a change of mind, a change of heart, a change of direction and be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. You cannot repent and continue in the same old way. Amen. He said to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And he said, I promise you, that you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And after they came to him, after the repentance of the Pentecost, 3,000 souls got baptized in one day. And the Bible said they continued. God does not save you to go back into the same mess you were in. It not save us to go back into the world of sin that we were in. But it's going in a new direction, a change of life. 